Hello and welcome to Legends of the Wind. I'm Jury Schenk and thanks for joining us tonight. We want to welcome you to a magical hour of amazing storytelling and diving into the deep things of the heart. Uh, hello Patriot, thanks for joining us today on the chat. Um, so our question today is, what will you do when you're faced with the impossible? Here at Legends of the Wind, we take story and we learn to think mythically. We learn to know what are we, what are we like inside of a story. Who are we on our hero's journey? And what will we do when we face obstacles? And what can we learn from the dreams of our heart? So, um, by the way, we had a promotion the past couple weeks uh, on our show, and uh, a lot of people signed up, so you guys should be expecting a lot more uh, free stories and guests coming in and receiving their stories. I'm in the middle of writing them and receiving those downloads. But also, our guest today is Jake Richards, and we're having a promotion for his show on Yes FM in Toledo, Ohio, and uh, so we have a... a once a month sort of situation where uh, one of his members of his audience went won a free story so that will be in the works as well now if there are no more free stories available and you still want to get your own story we do have a sale going on a promotion for 60 percent off typically these things cost 250 dollars because these are wonderfully custom made stories and the price is $99. So if you do want to have your own story, I recommend going to legendsthewind.com, go to the store, and you can get uh, uh, involved with the sale of $99. Now, we also have uh, on Amazon my book, Legends of the Wind, Volume 1. My wife, Alicia Choi, painted the illustration. This is from the story, The Fire Bear. It's an amazing illustration, and it's got 20 of these stories. And uh, it's been done the same way as all these other ones with kids and adults involved where they receive their own story. They learn to think mythically. So for those of you who have already purchased the book, thank you so much. If you have purchased, and we'd love to ask you to uh, write a review. We also have an audio book, which is also very special. It has uh, music and sound design. It's not just a boring monotone storytelling. It's a full theater of the mind. So just check that out on Amazon. You can also find it on legendsofthewind.com. Now, welcome to the show. Today, we're going to have our friend Jake Richards. So let's bring Jake in. Hey, Jake. How you doing? Hi, Jerry. How are you? Cool. Well, I just saw you a few days ago, didn't I? <laughs> yes, that's right. It was very fun. Cool. Thank you so much for having me on your program. It was an honor to be introduced to your audience and to get to know them and, and to introduce what we're doing here at Legends of the Wind. And thanks for allowing me to have the opportunity to help your other members of your audience get their own story, too. So I just had a real brief question for you. Um, what is it? You, what gets you excited about Legends of the Wind? Well, what really gets me excited about Legends of the Wind is uh, as a faith answer. And one of the very um, first interactions I ever had with you was booking you for the, the show because I have a relationship with your publisher. And I never thought about storytelling being a... Uh, and I don't want to generalize this because I know that's not just this, but uh, a spiritual gift. And uh, what gets me really excited about uh, Legends of the Wind specifically is that it's a very unique gift that's directly from Father, Father God, who is the ultimate storyteller. And it's like the way you described it was so good and <laughs> consistent. If you were a superhero, right, in a universe and you had there was an author no matter what uh, scenario or environment you were in, you are you would always be the same person in, in that scenario. And that's what you capture is, is that download from Father God as a consistent character and not necessarily a, uh, um, a, no, a non-fictional uh, environment, but the character that you capture through download remains consistent. And that's what makes me excited because it's a creative gift it's almost what you would call a creative miracle. And I absolutely, um, yeah, I'm a huge fan of your work, Jerry. Wow. Well, Jake, thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Um, you know, um, I guess what we're doing is my wife and I were pioneering something. You know, it's almost yeah. like um, uh, I kind of give this example. If I were to speak at a church, 
or a conference, I would say, hey, everybody, raise your hand if you've been offended and left the, or knew of someone that left the church. And so everyone raises their hand because they got offended. I said, okay, put your hand down. Now, next time, raise your hand if you've heard that someone left the church because they were offended because the pastor or the conference speaker was speaking in riddles and telling stories that no one understood and no one got an idea what he was talking about or she was talking about. And you know what? No one's going to raise their hand. Why? Because the church has abandoned in some way, some of us, uh, the storytelling that Christ did with parables. I mean, whenever he spoke to the masses, he told stories. And, uh, and so I think it's important to bring back the mystery of riddles, the mystery of storytelling. And, uh, and so hopefully more people do what I do. I don't want to be the only one, and I don't claim to be exclusive. So I hope that uh, other people can catch the, the wave. Well, and Jerry, uh, allow me to say one thing yeah. uh, about that. It is my belief that what, what you and your wife have is a taste of the world to come. I mm. think that the, the, the Bible talks about is that if you've tasted of the gifts of the world to come, and I believe that this is uh, this is a forever gift. This is like really cool. I, I see us doing things like this in heaven. And it's just like a glimpse of our life to come, of being creative, you know, because we get to be have eternity to be creative and God made us to be creative and create with along with him. And that's never going to stop. This gift is not just for this world, but it's for both worlds, in my opinion. Sure. Uh, biblically. Yeah. I can so understand. I'm, that's what gets me really excited about it. Awesome. Oh, I, I said awesome. Like I said, I've said that too many times. <laughs> well, thank, <laughs> thank you very much, Jake. You know, I say hello to your wife, Laura. Hello, Laura. Good to see you in the chat. Very excited. I'm excited too. Thank you, uh, Jake, for your thoughts on this and uh, your enthusiasm, your support. You know, I don't take it for granted at all. I mean, to have um, the people understand what we're doing and, and willing to push it out there into the world, that's really helpful and I'm really grateful. So, so guess what time it is? It's story time. It's story time. <laughs> <laughs> so um, just so you know, I don't know how this story applies to you. I have it as a complete mystery. I wrote this, I think, in January, February. And that was when uh, we first were introduced to each other. And uh, so if I bomb, I bomb. And uh, if I go for it, I go for it. I will do that. And I, um, even if I weren't to miss it for you, for you, for you, excuse me, um, I think that there's still something in the story that we can glean from that could be applied to our lives anyway or anyone in general. So here we go. Okay. The story is called The Crumbling Bridge. Jake looked out at the horizon from his house that sat on to the top of a large hill. The sun was low and the clouds were dark. It was going to be evening soon and there was a storm looming ahead. Jake was worried about his home, for even though it was on a high hill, there were cracks and faults in its foundation. To repair the house would require much work and demolition. He needed a miracle. The path from his home that traveled was cur traveled and curved down from the glassy, grassy hill would find its way across a large river at the bottom. Here, unfortunately, there was a coming impasse, for the bridge that led to the rest of the land was crumbling. Jake didn't know what to do about this bridge. The bridge and mortar were old and falling apart. The old ways of its design did not seem to last beyond his generation. He needed a miracle. Jake's biggest problem that he faced was that he was a man of vision and compassion, but his environment didn't provide the tools he needed to make his home and land alive again. Yes, his house was in a place of significance, and there was a beautiful view, but as he watched this storm come, he worried about the lasting effects of his vision and the sustainment of his property. Jake also looked at his heart, for he was having poor health. He needed a miracle. That night, Jake tossed and turned in his bed and turned around, and the storm came with its rain pouring on the, down the roof. The ceiling showed some leaks, and soon there was water dripping down in a well-placed bucket. It was always the same spot every storm and every night. The pitter-patter of the dripping of the, bu of the bucket unnerved him, and he could not sleep. Lightning flashed in the window, and half a second later, Jake heard the thunder crash. The glass in the window rattled. 
This accumulation of problems and the overwhelming nature of it all forced Jake to take action, but he did not know what to do or how to solve his problems. Jake got up and made some hot herbal tea to drink at the kitchen table. He tapped his spoon at the edge of the cup after he drizzled the honey and was deep in thought. Then Jake remembered one of his favorite films and looked at the spoon. He remembered the line, There is no spoon. He loved the idea, but he wondered if others would see the truth in it and not say it was unethical or improper. Jake was the man that would seek the truth in the most unusual and unapparent places, even the places certain people would deem unclean. Next, an idea popped into his head. Jake knew there was a series of books that he read as a child that told him to go to other magical lands. His uncle bought them for him and placed them in a chest made of walnut wood. Jake ran upstairs and opened the door to the attic. He climbed up into a higher place of thinking and seeing. The storm still raged and the floor of the attic was wet in places. There were even more leaks in the roof than he realized. Jake moved various items around and his search rewarded him with the discovery of his long lost treasure. The chest was there and he opened it. Inside were three books of magic. A deeper magic. But there was something else that surprised him. Inside the chest and under the lid was a mirror that had one large piece of reflecting glass, but also a small circular mirror that could rotate around and help realign the vision of your eyes if you placed it correctly. Jake peered at, this re at his reflection and moved the smaller mirror. And just as he made the correct alignment and he saw his eyes and face, a bright light flashed from the three books below. All three books opened up and there was a glowing light of different colors from them, each different, red, green, and blue. Jake held up his hands from the blinding light and tried to see. He looked again at those reflection in the mirrors and the colored lights all merged into a bright white light. Jake was no longer in the attic. He was standing in front of a large pine tree in the daylight. The tree was very tall and was full of pine cones and it stood at the top of a great precipice. Jake turned around and saw that he was standing on a very edge of a cliff that seemed to be miles above the earth. He, gra he gasped in fright, for if he moved wrong, he would fall to his death. Jake held onto the tree and he looked behind him. He could finally see the forest through the, for the trees. A single pine cone dropped and fell to his feet. Jake picked it up and examined it. Inside, he could see there were seeds to plant. This object had potential. Jake asked out loud, what am I doing here? A squirrel came down the tree and climbed on the branch that was hanging before Jake's line of sight. The squirrel spoke. You're here to perform miracles. Isn't that right, Jake? The sight of the squirrel alarmed Jake, and he said, Not another talking squirrel. Those crazy storybooks have too many. But he laughed at himself, thinking he was having a conversation with an animal. The squirrel said, In your hands is a great pine cone and you are standing on the edge of a precipice, wondering where to go to solve your problems. You need more than a miracle. Jake nodded his head as he thought that this was a significant encounter with more than what reality seemed. The squirrel continued, Your problems are like a spoon. There is no spoon. All you need to do is take your pine cone and its seeds and leap off this cliff and go. The breath of the wind will carry you. All you need to do is open your eyes and keep them open. You will see your house change and its foundation. You will see the crumbling bridge transform into a pathway of success. And the storm will no longer enter your heart and your body. Do you believe there is no spoon? The wind will solve everything. The breath will speak as you leap and it will help you forever keep your sanity and strength, and make everything go to its proper length. Your heart and your house will see themselves fit as you leap through the air and watch the breath take care of it. There is more in your heart than what you can see. There is no spoon, and you will become what you are meant to be. Jake processed the entire poem and conversation and turned around with a pine cone in hand. He looked out and saw the view of the clouds. The land below seemed inviting, but he saw possibilities and options. But the only thing left to do was to make the giant leap into the breath of the wind and see where it would take him. Jake asked, Can I do it? Do I have what it takes? The squirrel hopped onto his shoulder and whispered, You have more than you realize. 
Those who are with you are far greater than those who are against you. Look and see. Jake blinked his eyes, and bright lights appeared above the clouds before him. He saw many others who had already taken their flight and were riding the breath of the wind. They all flew in unison and with elegance. They twisted and turned in the air like a group of birds. Jake saw that he wasn't the only one with problems. He saw others succeeding in their quests. All he had to do was join them. This realization gave him new courage, and Jake said, There is no spoon. With that, declar with that declaration and peace in his heart, Jake ran and leaped into the air and off the cliff and joined the other bright lights in the sky. The breath of the wind lifted him up, and he gained altitude and had a better attitude as he flew. With each twist and turn, he gained more confidence and skills. Soon he saw that the promise from the little squirrel was right, and the breath of the wind brought him into more whole places. His heart healed. The breath restored the home and its foundation. Jake walked across the crumbling bridge and saw that the seeds of his pine cone transformed it completely. Jake looked out at his land and found his confidence again. Inceptio. <laughs> can, I, uh, can I respond to that? No. Yes, of course okay. I can. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, like... If this was even if this was just a story, it was absolutely captivating and breathtaking. Okay. The imagery was amazing, but it's not. This is definitely what's what's amazing about this jury is that I remember you telling me that you wrote me a story. Yes. Be, during our first or second phone call, and we've had several phone calls, but we've never really talked much about anything really. Just kind of business, getting things planned. And I want to tell you that almost every detail in that story was from God. And I'm going to tell you exactly how. So my background was a crumbled foundation, um, a, a crumbled home. And during that final season of in that, my parents' home was in that state, state of dis, disrepair. And I was praying for them. And I was just like, I need a miracle in that. And also at that same time, um, my health started going out and I, I was praying and I was like, God, I need a miracle for this. And as a matter of fact, I was bedridden for like two weeks. Wow. And then one night in the middle of the night during a, in a dream, the Lord uh, spoke to me audibly and he said, Luke 15 um, in his voice. And I know now came like many waters. Okay. I heard God's voice very clearly. And then he whisked me up with the breath of his wind. And he put, he lifted me up into the air and then put me back into my body. I woke up with the fear of the Lord all over me. Oh, gosh. But literally since that day, now, now ever since that day, I've, I've given my life to, to the Lord in a way that is very radical. Um, and since that day, I have probably had close to 200 dreams where I'm flying. <laughs> okay. And, and, uh, the Lord also promised me in another dream that he would show me a miracle because I, you kept saying that I needed a miracle yes. and I kept, I keep, I consistently hear from God about miracles and God has actually shown me miracles. Um, but he told me very specifically that there would be a day where the, the, the final spoon, if you will, between, between the possible or what I deem is possible and impossible. He's going to show me a miracle that will forever change my faith to a point where mm -hmm. there will never be a, an, a, an instance where I doubt what God can do. And, and I mean, to the point of flying, like he actually told me that that's going to be a miracle that happens in the, in the final days is that literally people are going to fly. Wow. And it's a promise that God gave me two years ago. And the fact that that was in there, uh, was pretty significant um and yes the, the the breath of his promise and and wind literally started that two years ago with a dream where he picked me up in a whirlwind after speaking so uh it was pretty that's pretty incredible jury that you got all that from a download <laughs> well thank you i mean it, it is a gift and i'm i know where it comes from um do you have any insight about the meaning of the bridge, the crumbling bridge? Because that's the title, and it's also one of the things that's in the story. It's not the house, right? It's not the health issue. What do you think? Um, 
I'm not entirely sure, but I, if I had to like, I, initially I would started thinking it's the bridge between the natural and the spiritual mm -hmm. and how, and the, and the device that I used to use to go between the both and how it needed to restructure because it used to be just religion, you know, or, or even after, after I fell into atheism, it was drugs. Mm -hmm. Um, but God, the rain, you know, the, the Bible talks about the winds came and the rain and the storm came and, and the foundations crumbled because mm -hmm. it's not built upon. So God really did rebuild that foundation where it's built upon. So, yeah, yeah. I think if I remember in the story, it talks about uh, that the bridge has to do with the way that previous generations worked. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, that too. That, that my family, sense. my family is so was so messed up. And that was one of the very. Now, now, like literally it was to the point where I told you about my parents' house, they were literally living with a dirt floor. They were wow. so poor. Oh my and God. my wife and I prayed for them every night for, uh, years. Wow. And, uh, then, then like after, after that dream, a year went by and my, uh, my parents were blessed from God with a $2 million a year business, like overnight, wow. overnight. Really? Really? Yep. Over. Yeah. Overnight. What kind of and business? It was, uh, it's actually it's actually at uh, two tattoo studios. Okay. And um, it's pretty incredible, and they're just like they do such a good job running it, and it's blessed our whole family because wow, of it. like it's like a trickle down. You know the Bible that talks about um, giving it will be given to you a good mm -hmm. measure pressed down and then pouring over. Yeah. Well, God chose to bless the the you know my parents and it's blessed all the rest of us. It's brought us closer together. Mm -hmm. my, my mom has started, like I told you, she's, she was stuck in religion uh -huh. and now she started to re receive dreams from God wow. and, and their marriage is being repaired. She got baptized. Wow. Like, yeah, it's like no joke. A major like transformation. Really, huge, huge. Wow. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'd like to open up to the chat. So I know that we've got some people out there. We've got Laura, we got Lisa, uh, a couple other people. Do you guys have any comment or question or any insight that you could bring to Jake's story? Uh, I would totally open up uh, any uh, comment. Uh, so just speak up if you want. You know, um, what do you think about those books and in the treasure chest? You know, it was red, green, and blue light, and it was the one that you know transported you into that place of the precipice. So like, does I mean, what does that think? How does he, how do you feel about that? I don't know, but um, while you were speaking, mm -hmm. I have a mentor. His name is Paige. Okay. And uh, I'm I'm hoping. Am I allowed to have a copy of the words to read over? Is it, you want your story? Yeah. Oh, I email it to you every, every guest out right after the show. So oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I um, I kind of felt in my spirit that he would actually have insight into that. Nothing like specifically comes to mind. Mm -hmm. It. it <laughs> I mean, when you said that it was locked up in an attic, um, it sounds to me like it's like a, like a subconscious thing. I'm not really sure what exactly it means, though. Right. So I can I can I, I like to be the less more interpreting. I like to have the the guest find it themselves. But yeah. Let, let me help yeah. you out. Let me help you out. So. So it says that you went to the attic, which is a higher place of seeing and learning. So it's like yeah. you're, you're going up a level and you're seeing, but there's leaks, the water's dripping in, and it's in a treasure chest, a, a walnut wood treasure chest. And so there's these three books. And did you see the reference to C.S. Lewis there? I actually did think about fantasy. Yeah. yeah. A deeper magic. So C.S. Yeah. Lewis in Narnia uh, talks about magic. Uh, the church wants to shut down and say all magic is evil, but C.S. Lewis makes a little bit of a different take on it, right? And so he says that when Aslan was uh, uh, killed on the stone table, there was a deeper magic than the white witch's magic that helped him come back to life. So that was a small nod to C.S. Lewis. But the thing is, like, the thing I'm getting about the books is... Um, I get the sense that it's a trilogy of a beginning, middle, and end, and that when there's the primary colors of red, blue, and green that turn into white light, um, by seeing that, in that higher place of seeing, your beginning, middle, and end of your life will come into full vision, and you see mm -hmm. with the complete 
vision. Does that make sense? So instead of seeing certain colors, everything is in, in, in scene. Does that make sense? I see. Yeah. And so when you see clearly and when everything is brought to uh, what I call a convergence of light, then that will take you to the place where you can make the leap. Wow. I love that. Yeah. That's awesome. I really do love that. Yes. <laughs> cool. And uh, so um, you, what do you think about what the, sh the squirrel showed uh, you on the precipice when you saw out flying in the clouds, the other lights, the other beings? Uh, I, I love the squirrel. I was totally there with him. Um, I, I'm not sure. And then he showed me the cloud of witnesses. I loved that. I loved that the cloud of witnesses being present uh, to cheer me on that just it it's totally a, a confirmation of what God's already told me is going to happen in my life. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you said that you're here to perform miracles. <clears throat> just literally last week, my friend, my mentor Paige called me, he said, yeah. Jake, I, I had a dream last night and you were in a state We you and I were at Kent State University and uh, um, God has used me to to do miracles before, mm -hmm. but, um, <laughs> this was, this was really crazy for him to call. He called me and he said, we are at Kent state university and, um, there were, you were administering healing to people. And then there was this one person in particular who was in a wheelchair and you looked over at me and was like, come pray with me. <laughs> <laughs> and my mentor is like, no, you pray. And I'm like, all right, fine. And I'd like told the guy to get up. And he like got out of the wheelchair and was like shocked and everybody around him was shocked. Wow. And, um, and, and yeah, like wow. that's the dream. And now, and then like a couple of weeks before that, I had actually had a dream where Catherine Kuhlman came. I oh. picked her up at an airport Nice. and she got into, got into my van with me and, and she was like teaching me. Okay. Yeah. Which is pretty cool. That's <laughs> awesome. Dream with Catherine the, Kuhlman. Well, that's yeah. like the cloud of witnesses thing that you said, you know, when yes. I, when I wrote your story and I've been working on it, cleaning <clears throat> it up, uh, I didn't see, I didn't recognize that it was the cloud of witnesses. I just thought it was other people with problems that were flying in faith or something like that. Uh, mm -hmm. but the fact that you picked up the cloud of witnesses is great. You know, I have yeah. a, I have a something to rock the religious boat right now. So, Let's go. so I love that. Uh, your parents have tattoo bar, uh, artists, right? Yeah. So what's going to rock the boat for religious people when there's someone that's missing an arm or a leg? <laughs> and then God gives them back their limbs, but there's also, it's covered with tattoos. <laughs> I've been seeing this for some time. And I think well, people are like, oh, tattoos are evil. Well, you know, Jesus had a tattoo on his leg. Don't you remember the book of Revelation, right? On so, his thigh will be written. So, so it's like you're going to have people who have a religious spirit that are going to can't deny that this person's arm or leg grew back. But everyone's going to go, where, where did the tattoos come from? So because that you have that in your family, I want to say to them and to you and others, expect that. I love that. See, what's going to happen in the next uh, awakening here is that we're not going to see the usual stuff. Not, it's not going to be, I mean, many ministers or prophetic voices have said unprecedented. That means that the stuff that happened in the, the book of Acts, nope, unprecedented. <laughs> well, we can only imagine what that could be, right? So we're going to be button heads with the political spirit, the governmental uh, attack, would be button heads with the religious spirit. And so what would be the one of the things that gets their under their skin is that this person's limb came back and yet it has beautiful tattoos that have stories being told on them. So just to put that bug in your ear, if that makes yeah. sense. Oh, I totally believe that. That's that's definitely <laughs> one of the miracles that that the Lord has told me will happen. Um it's not and and What's interesting about that particular miracle is it's not, it wouldn't be the first time that miracles happened because it happened in Azusa street. But, um, right. But the flying, the flying is also not the first time that's the miracles happened. It's happened. Uh, St. Joseph de Carpertino. Yes. Um, I and, heard of I, that. He would be yeah. like the hovering, uh, hovering yeah. monk or something. Yeah. Uh, oh, we have some yeah. comments in the chat. So Alicia and Kylie, my daughter and wife, uh, would love to meet with you at some point. 
Yeah. And then Laura uh, says, I think the home details and not having the right tools was an accurate word for our current situation, which God is bringing us out of. Yeah. What do you think about that? Yeah. That's true. Well, I'll just be really transparent. Yeah. Um, my wife and I, in in a lot of ways right now, we have vision from the Lord of exactly what he wants to do with our life. But for a while, we didn't have financial resources, which God has reconciled. And we also um, uh, had a very real uh moment where the like I, I think i told you before the show that the lord speaks to my wife in dreams quite frequently yeah and the lord i had had something in my heart that i wasn't like being very open with my wife about and the lord actually told her in a dream that i was hiding it from her and she came oh. to me <laughs> wow <laughs> and put it out in the open and uh, i was like well i can't if he if he came to you in a dream i can't really like <laughs> say oh, no it's just honey it's just a dream like it was, I, it was pizza I, <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah like totally totally that's true that's totally accurate and and but god is reconciling all of that in our lives wow. i just like i said the whole story from start to finish yeah was very um very prophetically accurate and mm -hmm. and holy spirit told me exactly what most details meant mm -hmm. and then he hid some things because it's the glory of god's concealed thing it's the honor yeah. of kings to speak that thing out you know yeah so i'm picking up some things for you and laura you're going to go into another place to rent. Get ready because after your one year lease and that whole one year lease, you will be in a position to buy a home. Wow. You will leave that lease and you will enter into a place with a larger family and a home. Wow. And, and uh, I see um, that it's very important to have animals in your family. Uh, and, and that, um, that you're going to need, um, you need to dive into the arts in your own way. And you don't have to copy me, right? I'm not telling you to do that, but uh, I'm saying that you need to be uh, uh, aware of media and, 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 and film, things that get you excited, it's things that, that the, the stories that got you excited, because you're going to be walking into a whole nother level in the next year. And I believe wow. that, um, that the dreams that you have and your wife will have, I would even expect uh, shared dreams where you both dream the same thing in one night and that that's going to bring a lot of direction and your mentor that you have, I don't remember his name, but um, he's going to be page. page. He's going to be pivotal. Yeah. Yeah. The pun. He's going to help you turn the page. Yeah. He's going to help you. So what is a page? So a page is like someone at a movie theater that comes and beckons and gets and helps uh, like a servant. It's like a waiter for a movie theater, right? Uh, and so I think that that is going to be giving you a place where he's going to give you wisdom and help you usher in uh, the wisdom of heaven. And I also think that, um, you know, you've had, a, you said an encounter or dream with Catherine Coleman, right? Yeah, you should expect many, many, many more encounters with the cloud in your dreams and in your prayer time, and that, uh, and that you shouldn't be afraid of people who uh, don't believe in the cloud witnesses interaction. God allows us to have a relationship with heaven, and uh, and He allows us to have a relationship with the family of heaven, and and so just so you know that they will always point back to Christ. They will never try to usurp anything, uh, and so those relationships are going to open your eyes to greater things that'll help you in the next season. So that's wow. what I understand for you. Bro. <laughs> I love it. I love it. You're so you're, you're flowing in that man. You're flowing in that. <laughs> I, um, I, I, and I just, I just want to say this. Um, yeah. Everything you just said uh, is confirmation. Like everything literally verbatim would you like me to break it down <laughs> sure we have plenty of time this is our, <laughs> okay. this is our show so okay we have our fun, just, family I, listening so it's wonderful to invite them in so yes go ahead yeah i think it's i, I think it's important to allow people to see the gifts operated in and also but also like give confirmation for things first of all um you said that we're gonna have a house at the end of one year lease our lease is a one year lease and that is our goal. And that is what God has kind of shown us when it happened. My mom recently just had a dream from God in the dream. It was very short. We drove, we pulled up in her driveway 
And out of out of the van, we unloaded my son, who's seven, who I have every other weekend. And but then we had a one year old baby and a three year old uh, girl. Wow. So we had we in the next year we by that. Uh, oh, and my son, she said in the dream, my son was 10, which means that we will have both children within the next three years because my child just turned seven yesterday, which means we have to have one of them this year. OK, OK. And then the other thing that you said was God wants me to dive into the arts. He actually gave me an entire list of videos he wants me to film. <laughs> He's also sending me to Africa in January to make a documentary about an orphanage there. Okay. And he made me buy all this camera equipment last month, spent all like the, like the first fruits of my money. He made me buy this very specific camera equipment to go okay. out and, and put all these videos on my heart to go and film. Right. So, and he said, yeah, exactly that. Literally, he showed me a vision of an office where I need to indulge in the arts. Literally what you just said. <laughs> and then you also said animals are very important to my family. And that's true. My mom runs an animal shelter. Okay. <laughs> my mom literally runs an animal shelter. She rescues animals. Wow. Uh, yeah. And I think because you said I need to embrace that. What's funny is that I have unforgiveness towards animals because ah. I blame them for my mom had health issues mm. and also financial issues. And I would see her spending money feeding these animals before uh, she would like feed themselves. I would also see there'd be times where she would miss like family gatherings because she'd have to go tend to an animal. And I'm like, well, that's just really out of order. So I got really, I have a lot of unforgiveness yeah. towards animal, yeah, which I'm working on. Like I recognize that I've asked right. God in my heart in that, but I think it's interesting that you said that because I know that's true that God wants to soften my heart to a lot of things. Um, wow. Wow. Every single thing you just said, I've just confirmed none of it. Wow. None of it's fallen to the ground. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, yeah. awesome. That, I said awesome again. Hey, Mike. Hey, Lisa. Uh, Laura says re I received that. Uh, I don't want this to and stop. My, my, mom and, my mom and dad's name are Mike and Lisa. Really? <laughs> yeah. I just looked down at the checks. I'm like, is that my parents? No. Um, they're they're friends of ours from our church here in, in Wyoming. Oh, okay. So, uh, this is yeah. great. I mean, Lisa says, I love how this is unfolding. Mike Smith says, this is awesome. Laura says, I received that. That Wow. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, so um, I, I don't think this is the end, but I'm not getting anything. So, um, well, let's, let's talk about this. Like, you know, did you see, like Lisa says that this is unfolding really well. I didn't expect to give any words to you today. I didn't have that. It just, this is a spontaneous thing. Um, yeah. But uh, like for those people who are going to see this on the Yes FM audience, what would you say from your own heart about about Legends of the Wind, but also about getting a story? But I'm, I'm not trying to spoon feed you this, but I want you to like really yeah. unpack it for them because... You know, for me, this is normal. You know, I, I've done yeah. this for a long time. But for many other people, this is kind of kind of off, isn't it? <laughs> well, I'll say this: um, there's a blessing. Uh, it says those who 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 sow into a prophet are given a prophet's reward. And so, I would say that just based off of the the fact that we have a creative prophet in front of us in the form of Jerry Shank, for my audience, you need to. Uh, if it's even remotely on your heart, you need to purchase a story. Um, this is a minute. It is a ministry based business. It, they are artists. So it's not like he would never charge you for, let's say that you're face to face with him. He's not going to charge you to give him a word, <laughs> but like this is, he is writing you a story, spending hours writing a story. And his wife does amazing illustration, which that's a, a package that you can receive. Uh, I would just say if it's on your heart to get it, do it and sow into this man's life um, because it's worth sowing into a prophet. And, um, you know, the old church used to sell their homes to make <laughs> sure that a prophet was taken care of. Yeah. Um, you know, that we have really fallen out of the place of honoring people that, that flow in the gifts, especially creatively and uniquely. And um, we have a celebrity culture because people look cool and they sing pretty music, but that's not, only thing that God, you know, gives to the body. Um, that's not the only thing that we should be putting up and edifying. Um, I don't like the celebrity culture we have in the church. I know that God doesn't either. 
God, God wants us to honor all of those, all the people that he's put things in, which is all of us in, in unique ways. Um, and I believe that Jerry and his wife uh, are people that we need to sow into. They even have, um, they even have been given something to redeem uh, secular media, which is amazing. Like uh, Jerry's been giving a very, been given a very specific vision to redeem Disney. And um, we need to, we need to, uh, this is, this is the time to sow into people like that to make sure that that stuff happens. Um, and I believe that if, yeah, if God's putting on your heart, if you're watching this from SFM or any, anywhere to sow into jury, even, even getting something in return, uh, do so. So that's what I would say. Wow. Jake. Thank you. Uh, thank yeah. you. You know, uh, years ago when I was first doing this uh, with the kids and some adults in L.A., uh, my wife and I, I think we were, I guess we were already married at the time, but she says, you know, you need to do this as a business. And I said to her, I can't charge money for these stories. And she's looking at me, it's like, well, I do prophetic art and I do paintings. Are yeah. you telling me I can't take my creative art and put it in a gallery and sell it? Yours is a creative work too. I'm like, yeah, you have a point. So I actually tried to get some confirmation from someone who I respected. So um, do you know who Kim Clement is? Prophet Kim. Yeah. Yes. So Kim. for those of you in your audience that don't know who Prophet Kim is, he's passed away several years ago. But he is basically like the spirit of Elijah is on, was on him. And he gave words to our nation, to political figures, to other countries, individuals, families. And he was incredibly accurate. And I would go to every meeting I could when he was visiting in L.A. I got the Pasadena, the Ma Auditorium, or the Sportsman Lodge. And so I learned from him from his example because he was a pianist. He was a concert-level pianist and a worship leader. And I had an encounter with him uh, in a dream and, and actually a, a, that led to a vision with Kim. And Kim opened up my eyes and ears to do what I do, like, like these stories. And uh, that was in 2004. Well, you know, 2013 rolled around and Alicia and I were married and Kim was still alive. And I had friendships with some of Kim's friends. So I reached out to Kim and asked him the question, you know, should I charge money? for what I'm doing with Legends of the Wind. And he actually wrote me back a very long email. And he said, if you don't charge money for this, you're doing a disservice to God. And he explained that, that the anointing is, the anointing oil is made from sweet and bitter spices that are pounded and pounded and pounded into the oil. And that is what creates the anointing. And he said to me in the email, and I never met him I'm in person, uh, but he says that you had a, a lot of pounding in your life and that created this. And so whenever there's um, something that was developed in you, that it requires a return. And uh, so he didn't say I was selling out my prophetic gift. Like you said a moment ago, is like if I were giving a word directly to a person, um, either on the air in person, that's a, that's a prophetic word, not a story. I wouldn't charge money for that necessarily. and But this is a creative work. And so that's the difference. And so Kim Clement is probably one of the most significant voices that we've had in this generation. He basically approved of what we were doing. Yeah. That was a huge relief, you know. Um, Lisa says, at one point I had major body heat, head to toe, head to toe beyond a hot flash, LOL. Wow. <laughs> that's wow. great. That's amazing. And, you know, I also, what's great about, um, you know, he talked about God concealing a matter. It says, yeah. the Bible says that it is the glory of God to conceal a matter. It is the glory of kings to seek a matter out. Now, yeah. uh, so what is the glory of God, right? It, it, one, one person, a, a mystical saint in the Middle Ages or something like that, says that the heart of a man is the, the glory of God is the heart of man fully alive. So if God gets glory uh, from concealing a matter, so these stories contain hidden treasures. They're not meant to be direct. They're meant to be interpreted. Right. So he gets glory when your heart comes fully alive, when you discover you're a king, because that's right. the glory of kings is to discover a matter. When you find these treasures in these stories and you have your eyes of understanding open up, all of a sudden you realize you're a royalty. You understand that you can be healed of whatever trauma, physical, 
emotional trauma, the past. And the, these stories uh, point you to your future. Um, the reason every single story ends with inceptio, have you ever heard of the, that word, inceptio, Jake? Inceptio? So what typically does movies and, and, and books end with at the end of a book story? The end. the end. No, these stories are your beginning, and I point you to your future where you finish your parable. And inceptio is Latin for the beginning. Inception. I give you your starting place and I let you finish your parable. It's, it's an inception point. And that's why it's always ended with inceptio. So that's a little, little fun stuff, you know, I like to put in there. Um, yeah. But yeah, so thank that. you very much. Does anyone yes. else have any comments or questions for us? Um, we're about 48 minutes into the show. And... Um, well, while I'm waiting for any comments coming up, I just want to remember, remind your audience that uh, for a story, if you do want to get a story, go to legendsofthewind.com and uh, go to the store. And we're doing a promotion right now for a sale on a story. So you, instead of $250, we're giving a 60% discount. And so the price is $99. Now, also, my wife Alicia does illustrations if you add on to it. So these are some of the, the designs that my wife has done uh, here. Let's see here if I can get the angle right. Um, these are book covers. And so your story will come in, in, in one of these. This is a hard and soft bound. And uh, it's uh, one of a kind. Absolutely basically. beautiful. Single, single print um, thing. And uh, it's, it's autographed by me and Alicia. And uh, we offer that to you as well. When we were doing a promotion back in uh, February, uh, those were stories were given out for free, but three of them asked for, or two or three of them asked for an illustration. So uh, it's something to kind of keep it as something special. These things are treasures, and uh, you never know what's going to happen in these treasures because uh, they continue to speak. So when I email you, Jake, this story, you're probably going to read it many times and see more into it because that's the thing. It's an unfolding thing, right? So, yeah. so thanks guys, everyone. Now our show, Legends of Win podcast is every Monday night at 10 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Mountain, 7 p.m. Pacific. Uh, we are weekly. And, uh, you know, if we end up having a lot of orders and a lot more stories, we may do <laughs> more than one show a week because we have to do it. Um, yeah, so uh, if you enjoyed this show, we ask you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Please hit the subscribe button, hit the like button and the bell and all that fun stuff. And please comment in the uh, notes below and, and just enjoy the show. So, Jake, do you have anything else that you want to share? It's on your heart. <clears throat> just thank you so much, Jerry, for your time. Thank yeah. you for using your gift, man. And um, yeah. I just, I, I thank, and I thank you for the home church, the, the church that you have. Uh, and, and I, I hope that they support you and I, and I hope that, um, yeah, uh, I hope that they, they know what a treasure that they have in, in you and your family. Well, thank you. You know, um, when I was on your show, uh, on yes FM the other day, uh, I'm so glad it went so smoothly. I was so nervous leading up to it, to be very honest. Uh, but yeah. I want to thank you. I also want to thank your staff at the Yes FM and your station manager and, uh, you know, the people that you work for, that you answer to, because I know that your career and job were at, on the line on some level with how this goes. I also recognize authority. And so I want to just thank the, your authority figures at your job and the people that you work with, because honestly, I hope to get to know them uh, just on a relational level, uh, because uh, I think that what you have there, I assume, is a, of a family of people. And so I think that they're, um, they're important uh, to the people that, that surround you uh, in your workplace are just as important as my church family, too. So thank you very much, Jake. So guys, well, it's a good show, right? I think it's a great show. I love how this worked out. Um, uh, you're welcome, Laura. You're welcome, Mike. Thanks for watching, everybody. You know, we had a lot of the most of the people stuck around for the whole show. Uh, if you uh, want to see us again, we'll see you next week. And thank you so much for watching and enjoying our uh, seeing Jake become a legend. All right, have a good night. <laughs>